So very good. So this is a wonderful way to start the day, and it also leads into what's going to happen afterwards. So if you'd like, just to close your eyes. We do about uh, 15 minutes, or 15 to 20 minutes. Got my cock over there. And with your eyes closed, you'll be able to become more aware of the feelings in your body. You're not distracted by sights. You are still distracted by my words, but this is guiding you. Just like you have a coach uh, to teach you how to play tennis, or you have a driving instructor sitting next to you when you learn how to drive. Beginnings of meditation, it's good to have some guidance. So in order to calm the mind down, just to uh, put it somewhere else so you're not thinking, you're not planning, you're not remembering, it's good to put your attention into your body and how it feels. For those of you who are knowledgeable Buddhists, this is the first Satipatthana, the body awareness. So how are you sitting right now? In particular, can you experience the sensations in your legs? How are they? And when you focus on one part of the body, you'll discover that there are some places in your legs which are aching, which are painful, which is too pressed because you haven't got your legs in a good position. So if that's the case, move your legs, adjust them. And as you adjust them, your mindfulness gives you feedback, which is one of the most important parts of mindfulness, awareness. It shows you whether by moving them the feelings become more comfortable or they get worse. And obviously if they get worse then move back again. The mindfulness and the kindness is what we mean by learning. It's how we understand the best position for our legs. It's not just about posture, it's about developing the ability to learn using mindfulness and this feedback. At the same time, if we're focusing on the feelings of our body, it stops us thinking. It substitutes for thinking because the feelings in the body are right here, very hard to give them a name. So it undermines the thinking process which seeks to name everything. So once your legs are comfortable, then move to your butt. There's a reason why we compare difficult people to pains in the butt because the butt does sometimes feel uncomfortable and painful, which is why we fidget. So can you be aware of the sensations and feelings in your butt? And if it needs adjusting, please do so. Awareness, movement, more awareness, and the whole process of kindness to find the best comfortable position for the purpose of meditation. And then you move up your body to your your back. Many people, even meditators, get back problems because they're not aware of how they hold their back. And you can move it, stretch it, relax it, and compare. Let mindfulness give you the feedback on what is the best position for your back. And out of kindness, out of compassion, just put your back in the most comfortable position. Don't believe the books, don't believe Ajahn Brahm. Find out for yourself the best position for your back. And then where you put your hands. Find the best position for your hands by being aware of them and how they feel. Can you maintain that position comfortably for the next 10 minutes, 11 minutes? If so, great. Move up to your shoulders, which have a lot of pain and tension, uh, tension born pain. And one little skillful means which I like to practice is to imagine that my shoulders are a bunch of strings tightly stretched, which causes the tension, the pain. And imagine that these two invisible beings are pulling at those strings, stretching them, causing their tension. 
and I imagine just those two invisible beings on each shoulder letting go. And as they let go, I find that my shoulders relax as well. My mindfulness gives me that information back. Gives me the data. I can feel relaxation happening. My awareness knows what relaxation feels like. And then move to the head. You move to the left or the right, get the best position for your head, which feels comfortable and sustainable. The mindfulness is what gives you the data, the information, the feedback, so you can find the best possible posture. And you're kind enough to move into that posture. And once the body is relaxed, I'm rushing through this, once the body is relaxed enough, I like to spend a minute or two looking into my own body and finding the most irritating part of my body, the painful part, the part which is aching, the part which is somehow unbalanced. When I focus on that part of the pain, that part of the irritation, zooming in on it, then I can be mindful of that to the exclusion of everything else. And as I'm mindful of maybe a, a stomach ache, maybe irritable bowel, maybe a pain in the, in the elbows or headache or irritation in your nose, when you focus in on that and have mindfulness, you will actually find what makes it worse, what makes it better. And especially this is a great area to experiment with your mental attitude, how you react and relate to the irritations, aches and pains in your own body. And you soon learn what makes that irritation, that pain, that ache less of a problem what exacerbates it and makes it worse. And you will find, as I found many years ago, that when I react with wanting something different, controlling, fear, then those feelings in the body get much worse. But when I let it be, when I am kind, when I open the door of my heart to that feeling, it lessens. It's the interaction of your mind and those physical feelings is explored through trial and error and mindfulness gives you the feedback where you learn how to relax and give healing to your own body. Much of the body becomes so at ease and relaxed. It's one of the reasons when I teach meditation, I always call the meditation center, like I did a couple of days ago in Chicago, Club Med Itation. To change the attitude to something where you relax, chill out, and you feel good. When my body is relaxed and feels good, I can let it go. At the same time I've learned what letting go means, what kindness means. It's that which relaxes aches and pains in my own body. At the same time, it's so important to have good health that you have a reason to be mindful and kind. And once your body's relaxed, we can start moving up to our emotional world, our mental health. And in particular, as I will talk about later, mindfulness is also important where we put that mindfulness. So I'm going to ask you now, not to shout this out, but to ask yourself how peaceful or how agitated are you right now? to give it a number from 1 to 10. 1 means you're really peaceful. 
10 means you're agitated, upset, angry even. Give it a number and be honest. It doesn't matter what that number is. This is just a means of making you mindful to the state of your mind, how peaceful or how agitated it is. For want of a better name, I call this the peaceometer. Just like, you know, on the audiovisual, someone is looking to make sure the sound is of the right amplitude. They've got needles and they adjust accordingly. The needle gives you feedback. How peaceful are you? How agitated? Once you're mindful of that, and for the scholars, that's the third Satipatthana, awareness of your mind, and also what causes it to be agitated, what causes it to be still. And you soon learn kindness, contentment, happy to be here, in this moment, that is what causes you to become more and more peaceful. Having goals and aspirations, wanting something, not being happy to be here, that is what causes more agitation. You don't believe that, you learn that, you experience it. So you soon realize how to be peaceful. Putting your mindfulness on one of the most important parts of your mental being, the peaceometer. You will also discover that when you start to conceptualize the past or the future, that moves the needle way up towards 10. Yes, it's important to be in the present moment, but why? And you learn, because thinking about the future, dragging up the past, just disturbs you even more. So when you're aware of the peaceometer, it's so easy to be here because it feels good. Peace is beautiful. So just being here, not going anywhere, not giving this moment a name, not taking notes in your mind to remember later. You are learning from the present, not from the past. The truth is in this moment. You're experiencing it now. And never allow your learning to stand in the way of this truth. Peaceful and kind. As you go deep in the meditation, you'll soon become aware of your own breathing, naturally. It's just what happens. All these stages of meditation are just stages of letting go, stages of peace, ever more delightful. Kindness is part of it. It's not just being mindful, it's being kindful. Perceiving the delight of peace. Once you value the beautiful silence, peace, contentment in this moment, when the needle of your peaceometer goes closer and closer to one. It is a stable state of mind. You don't need to hold it or even to guard it. 
it's stable in and of itself. You just let go and enjoy. No stress. How does that feel? What's it like? We're coming to the end of the meditation now. So, very slowly, put a smile on your face. And then, open your eyes to end the meditation. Thank you. <laughs>